Hello again, YouTube, and I'm back with a with an update video. And this video here, I just want to show you how I, you know, solved the issue of AC coupling and what to do with the excess power that uh, goes to the batteries and you know to keep them from uh, exploding. The kind of ex let me explain AC coupling in in this in a few short words. Essentially, I have my micro grid tie inverters. Um, tied into the output of my inverter charger. This inverter charger has the capability of taking that that power that comes from a my grid tie inverter in a power in a grid down situation in a power outage. It will it can synchronize with those grid tie inverters and utilize the power from those grid tie inverters to supplement the loads in my home or to charge my batteries. That is the benefit of AC coupling. And there are systems, you know, in the uh, industry now that that are that allow you to do that. And this is one of them. This is a MagnaSign 2,000 watt. Uh, I'm sorry, 4,000 watt, 24 volt PAE series inverter. And uh, when you do AC coupling, um, they tell you that okay, the reason why this is a good buy, and you know, this and Xantrex Outback and so forth, is because they actually within the software they have the ability to do frequency shifting as a safety measure. So what happens is when the grid down, when the grid is down, the, the, if there is not enough loads to consume the power coming from the grid tie inverters, these particular inverter chargers will then send the power to the batteries in a bulk charge mode. Okay, it's just going full blast to the battery bank. Now what happens is once that happens, this particular voltage will steadily climb. It will climb and climb and climb. Now. What happens is with these type of inverters, especially the MagnaSign here from Magnum Energy, they use something called frequency shifting. And they will shift frequency from 60 hertz to something like 60.5. And because these, the microgrid tie inverters that I use on my pole mount to do the AC coupling, um, they are UL certified. And because of that UL uh, certification and this IEEE standards that they must adhere to, they will go offline because if it's not 60 hertz exactly um, thereabouts, then they will go offline. And if they go offline, what happens, this particular voltage drops and they will go offline. Those microinverters, again, the certified microinverters will go offline for five minutes. They will go down offline for five minutes and after five minutes, then they will try to synchronize with the system. And so, but Magnum Energy says that, you know, even though that's in the software and it has the capability, they do not recommend, they, they recommend that you use something else as well, some type of other battery management system, like a diversion controller. Now, the majority of the industry uses a diversion controller to, uh, you know, to counteract the possibility of, you know, overloading their batteries because of an overvoltage situation. And their diversion controllers will actually connect up to, it's similar to this, and their diversion controllers um, will connect to something like a, a resistor bank to bleed off the energy. And it'll, it'll generate heat. Or they tie it into a water heater uh, to bleed off the excess uh, energy as well. Now, I chose not to go that route because I don't want this little utility room to, one, be overheated, and two, I didn't want to dedicate one heating element in my water heater to do this. So, but I needed to have some type of fail safe in order to uh, complete my AC coupling um, system. So what I did was I went the industrial automation route. Okay, that's the, my background. And so what this is, this is a industrial grade, you certify, you name it, industrial grade um, uh, voltage monitor, okay. And this is for over, um, basically over voltage protection of, of circuits, critical things, critical circuits. And this will monitor the, the voltage. And when it reaches a certain point, um, then it will trigger, uh, it will close some contacts. And what it will do is it will close some contacts and it will energize, um, you know, the uh, inputs on these two solid state relays. And these two relays, they're solid state, industrial grade solid state relays. They're 240 volts a piece at 25, they support 25 amps. They're mounted on heat sinks and they're mounted to a metal enclosure. Um, it's basically overkill for what I wanted to do, but I wanted to, yeah, I, I want it to be safe. So we're talking 120 volts coming on this leg, 120 volts coming on this leg, and they're both rated for 240 volts. So again, um, they're well within specs. 
So what happens is when this relay kicks off um, because of an over voltage situation, it'll read the battery voltage and if it gets up to like 30 volts for more than like 15 seconds and it's configurable, more than 15 seconds, then it'll energize those relays and it will kill the contacts. These are what is called, these are normally closed relays. So under normal conditions, power is being fed 240 volts between the two, is being fed between the, uh, the two relays and is going into this particular load center. So this is a normal situation. They are normally closed. These contacts are, these, these uh, outputs are normally closed. When this triggers, this will open those contacts and therefore um, open the circuit, essentially turning off the grid tie inverters. And those grid tie inverters will go offline for five minutes in, or until the battery voltage will decrease enough to where this particular um, voltage monitoring uh, relay will essentially um, close those circuits again and allow power to go through. So again, without going into any details, um, again, this right here is serious, um, uh, you know, serious elect electrical type work. So this is not something I would recommend for the faint at heart, okay? If you don't know what you're doing, I wouldn't recommend this approach unless you truly, truly, truly understand how this works. Um, again, the majority of the industry uses a diversion load in order to, you know, to dump the excess power. Um, now, I don't know anything, I don't know if this will work that well in a wind situation. I don't know anything about wind energy and, and turbine, wind turbines and stuff like that. I, I don't play with those. Uh, but I, obviously, I know it works. I've tested it and it works fine. It works in this, on the solar side of things. And again, this is just a different approach. I decided to take a different route. As opposed to dumping the excess energy, I decided to just simply cut the power off and let the, the, the micro grid time inverters do their thing, which is shut off, wait five minutes before, you know, before synchronizing with a, a, power, a, a, a grid source, and then you know, send the power, let this monitor if the voltage reaches a certain point, then you know, again, close, close the contacts. Uh, since these are industrial grade, um, they're, they're in a metal enclosure, I've grounded it uh, as far as just simple equi equipment grounding to the box. Um, it works fine. So anyway, YouTube, I just wanted to kind of bring you guys uh, up to date on what I'm doing. And at some point, I hope to give a demonstration and a, and a more in-depth talk on what AC coupling actually, well, AC coupling, there's a lot of videos that actually tell you about AC coupling, but I was going to actually demonstrate it to you so that you know what's going on. These grid tie inverters that you get off eBay and so forth, you cannot, you cannot, I repeat, you cannot use these things for AC coupling. Um, you know, you should not use these things for AC coupling because unlike certified micro grid, grid tie inverters, Certified microgrid tie inverters actually shut off and disconnect for five minutes. Okay, that's a safety measure. But these things do not. Okay, they do not fall under that IEEE certificate. Yes, they have anti islanding and everything, but they are not certified for a reason. And they do not, you cannot use these or any these types of grid tie inverters for AC coupling. So please don't, don't even think about it. Um, but anyway, uh, again, this is a nice enclosure. I got it from Gray Bar, and uh, I'll put the cover on it to protect because those are live 240 volt circuits there, and um, you know 240 volts will make you uh, make you jump and shout if you touch them or kill you. But anyway, just wanted to kind of bring you up to date, YouTube, on uh, my approach um, to AC coupling as far as dealing with the extra power. Uh, again, I don't use diversion loads except for here. Um, I don't mind using this grid tie inverter for excess power coming uh, coming off of my um, uh, my battery bank from my you know what is this right here is this is not a AC couple system. This is a what is considered a DC couple system because the power is coming into a DC charge controller and it is going to a you know the DC side of my inverter. An AC couple system is the power is actually coming from the grid tie inverter on the AC output side of the inverter charger. So this is a DC couple system, it charges my batteries and you know the excess power this using this this diversion controller from in rods basically it, it, that's what it is. It's, it calls it the grid tie inverter controller. It's a diversion controller. 
and basically, you know, it feeds power back to my home grid or, you know, through this the device. I have no problem with this, okay? I have no problem with it. However, you cannot use this for AC coupling. But anyway, all right, YouTube, um, again, I hope to maybe one day go into, in, you know, in depth with what AC.